So in the first video, we added the ability to see through walls by creating windows that can get bigger or smaller. In this video, we're going to try to add an outline to each of these characters so they appear through the wall. So we end up like with an effect like this, and then when we combine it with our previous effect, we end up with with this type of an effect. So I'd suggest watching the first video to see how we set up this see-through window. And if you did like that, please do subscribe and like. So in order to create this um, effect where an, a, an object is highlighted through another object, we will need to create a post-process material. So if we go here, create a material, we'll call it our post-process material, just say highlight. And we'll open that. So here is our basic material. We'll need to change it from a surface to a post-process material. And now all we'll have access to is the emissive color. So to make this effect work, we will be taking advantage of scene depth and custom depth. So just to have a visualization, if you go to lit, come down buffer visual visualization, we can pick the scene depth first and you get this almost black and white map essentially the closer you get to the object the darker it gets and the further away the lighter it gets i.e goes towards one from zero if you take any object and you if i take that mannequin and if i search for custom depth i can now gain access to the render custom depth pass option, which I can tick. If we look at the custom depth buffer first, so we go here, again, lit buffer visualization, custom depth. First of all, there is nothing that shows. However, if I go back to that mannequin of ours, put custom depth and on the mesh, say render custom depth pass. And now we go down, we can see that the, that this object renders in the custom depth. So it's visual, visualizable. And similar as you go closer, it goes to zero, further away, it goes to one. So we're gonna take advantage of the difference between the scene depth and the custom depth in order to create those highlight or outline effects. So if you go back to our material, we need to now find a node that gives us access to these depth buffers. So you right click, put in scene texture. And from here, you now have access to different post-process values. So the first one we want is the scene depth. We'll also want to get access to the custom depth. So if we control C, control V, and then pick, look for custom depth. We'll also want to have access to what the original color of the scene is. So what each of these pixels is showing when no post-process effect is being applied. So again, we can use the same node. Copy and paste. And you gain access to that from the post-process zero input. So this is the original color 
of the pixels before any effect has been applied. Now the way the information comes through, the custom depth and the scene depth are both numbers but they come through as a, as a vector. So we need to mask it and get access just to the red channel. So a component mask, and we just want the red channel. We can then store this as a value. So named reroute, and this will be our scene depth value. We'll do the same here. So from the custom depth, we'll mask it. And then we'll do another named reroute. And this will be our custom depth value. <clears throat> from the post process, we want to get keep the original color. But we just want that as a vector 3. So again, we'll component mask. And we'll just get the RGB value. And we'll store that as a named reroute. That's our original color. So to understand how the next part is going to work, you need to have some understanding of what sort of numbers are coming through these two nodes. So if we go back to our main scene, basically on this screen, this pixel here will have a scene depth value, which will be based on the distance. But we have not applied custom depth to this wall. So you'd think that its custom depth value would be zero, but that's not true. I think the actual value that comes through is an enormous value, like a billion or a hundred billion. Whereas this pixel here will have a scene depth value of the wall, but it will also have a custom depth value of the mannequin in which we've clicked the custom depth. So for instance, the wall might have a, custom, a scene depth value of, of a 500, and the mannequin pixel will have a custom depth value of 900, therefore showing that the 900 is behind the 500. The custom depth is behind the scene depth, which is when we want to show the highlight. So if we go back here, we can take advantage of that. So we know that if a pixel doesn't have any custom depth associated with it, not only is it a huge number, like 100 billion, but it's essentially a 100 billion with no fractional value. Whereas the pixel behind will probably have some kind of fractional value, so 900.01 or 900.32. Whereas if there is no custom depth, it will just be essentially an integer. So we can take advantage of that. If we get the custom depth, reroute. If we get the fractional value of this, so we just get the, the value after the decimal point. And if we then round that number, so anything above zero will round up to one. We can then take advantage of that in a lerp. So if we create a type in lerp linear interpolate, we want to interpolate between the original color and the color of, of the highlight material, depending on whether there is custom depth at that pixel. So if we get our original color, which we stored from the post process zero, we put that in zero and say we want to have a highlight color of, of green. Put that here. And then we can use this as the lerp. Now when we put this in here, we should hopefully get a green color wherever 
a pixel with custom depth exists. So we save that. What we need to do is add a post-process volume. So we go here, type post-process volume, drag it onto the scene, search for unbounded, so it covers the entire screen. And then we want to search for the material. So that comes through as an array, post-process materials array. We can add a add one here, an asset, and this is our material that we created. And now, as you can see, that character with custom depth is being highlighted. So if we go and we take the couch and we look for custom depth, render in custom depth, that too will be highlighted. And if we take this little guy here, custom depth, he too will be highlighted. So that looks great there. The problem is though, it's still highlighted when we go through the wall. So if we, which is perhaps not what we want, we want it to show when it's behind the wall, but to go back to the normal color when there is nothing blocking it. So how do we do that? Well, we go back to our material here. So what we can do is maybe just store this as a named reroute and call this our highlight color. Now we'll need to Get an, <clears throat> get an if node to decide which color to put through to the emissive. I will do that based on whether the custom depth, so the custom depth value, is greater than the scene depth value. In other words, if the custom depth is behind the object with only scene depth. So that is our A. This is the number we're comparing it to. If it is, if the custom depth is greater than the scene depth, we want to show the highlight color. So we get our highlight color. If it isn't, we want to show our original color. And if we put that in emissive, and we go back to our scene, we can see it's already working. So it's highlighted when it's behind the wall. And as we go through, the highlight disappears. We just get the original color. So now if we play, we get this effect where we can see these custom depth characters behind the wall. If we now use our window, press X, open it, as we start to see through, it's only highlighted where the wall is and not where the window is. So I hope that is a good effect to try and copy. In the next part, we'll look at using stencils to achieve this, achieve this effect, which can give us a bit more control and some extra effects that can be added.